Welcome back to the reality, guys. I'm your host, Billy Blinks, joined as always by my co host, Brian. What's going on, everybody? Waleed. What's up, boys? And Brett. Well, that wasn't weird. <laughs> as you can see here in the title and in the shower, we are here to watch and cover the amazing race. This is uh, leg six of the amazing race. Uh, the second leg that we are watching from Jordan. Uh, this one was started at Amman, uh, specifically at the Citadel. Uh, but we can't bury the lead here. Unfortunately, this in the worst way became a non elimination leg. Um, Abby and will tested positive for COVID and were instantly eliminated off of the top. Uh, really a shame, really good team. Um, maybe they can get a shot to come back in the future. If their lives allow it, uh, anybody just wanting to give their thoughts on that crappy elimination. Brett, the floor is yours. Yeah, that was op- absolute BS. Come on, man. Abby and Will were my winner pick. I don't know why I picked them. I just did because she was a super fan. He looked athletic, and I was like, I'm going to pick them. And now they're gone because COVID, which is a bunch of BS. I'm tired of this COVID crap. I just got DQ'd from a job I was working on because of like I wouldn't I wasn't booster vaccinated. So I don't know if I should say this, but um, yeah, it, it it sucks, man. Like you're basically discriminating against people because of a test. And you don't even want to enforce other cleanliness uh, standards that have been around in the world for hundreds of years. Um, so I'm pretty upset with it. And uh, I'm going to have to pick a new uh, pick a new wagon to hitch my my ride to. So I'm going to go with the the Army bros because uh, I just think they have Deep everything car. it takes to win. Yeah, so whatever it is. What I want to pick. I wanted to say somebody – I think a commenter was like, we didn't see a lot of that team last episode, like the edit. So I don't know if this was like building up. Um, so kudos to whoever said that. I don't remember who it was. It probably was Francesca. French, was it Francesca? I think her name is Francesca. Who's Francesca, the Francesca, yeah. So yeah. Francesca. He's like got the probably. knowledge. Yeah, I think it'd be Fran. We're probably wrong, but we'll yeah, whatever. Forget somebody us. did it. Um, uh, yeah, so I agree. I mean, listen, Michael and Marcus isn't a bad team to jump onto. Um, it's just another thing. We're gonna get into the leg and the locations. Definitely, there's a lot of things here, but again, it's just something I will always stick to and tell anyone tell me if I'm wrong. If you know it's a non-elimination leg with the the no tension, the no, you know, being immortal in the amazing race, it loses all of its tension, just all of its tension. And I think it robs what could be really amazing legs just of anything. It just makes it really tough on me. Does anyone agree or disagree? Um, well, them leaving 45 minutes late from the first place, like, what is it? Then you're leaving 20 minutes from the 15 minutes from the last, like, what is It's not like Probably that like big of a penalty. Minutes. Yeah, like it sounds terrible, but it might not be that terrible. It doesn't even sound that bad. Because you said like three tiers of leaving. So if they're not in that third tier, that means if they're going to break it up by. They're probably in 15 minute yeah, intervals. It's not that terrible. That's what it is. Yeah, I missed what the first three three events there were of the uh, teams leaving. But the, la- the last place team this episode, which I think was Lumumba, yep. is uh, he's now going to leave 45 minutes after the first. The- the yeah, the original team, team one, oh. but they don't say what about team three in front of the Metro. Oh, Bayern. so he's, yeah. he's 45 minutes. Okay. All yeah, right. so they, that could be nothing. Like, it, it sounds, it, the way he worded it, it makes it sound terrible, but it might not be that bad, but we don't know. So okay. it could be, we just don't know. Yeah, but just like Bill in our texting group said, like, oh, this sucks. It's a non elimination. I agree too. Like, it takes, it takes all the stakes yeah. out of the entire episode. Mm. Like, I tuned on, like, right when the other team got eliminated. <laughs> I was just like, this episode doesn't matter. This is this is gonna. <laughs> so I'm like, should I just even watch this in the shower, or should I just take my shower in peace? Which I forgot to allude to from my thumbnail. So, yep, that's what I was doing. Okay, so I do want to go through the leg though. I thought it was a cool location. I again, I think when going through all these, if this was an elimination leg, these challenges would have had so much tension. They would have been great. They would have, it would have been, people would have been so damn frantic and they would have been so much more stressed and yelling. There was none of that due to the lack of stakes, but I do want to run through it. Um, like I said, they do start at the Citadel. Uh, the route info brings them to the, uh, and Molly, you can help because I'll butcher a lot of this. Uh, the Mac Tobit Kazanet bookstore. Not bad. What was it? Uh, I didn't, yeah, I didn't even get that part. Cause actually I think I missed like the first like five to 10 minutes of the episode. Okay, cool. So that was uh, a bookstore. Um, 
a lot of the things early on navigation stuff. So some of the, the classic amazing race navigation mm-hmm. issues. Uh, the lack of English letters apparently on a lot of the signs or all the signs were really tough. They had to go and ask the locals. Waleed, is that accurate? Are there not like any English signs? There are there there's some, you know, stores. It's most I mean Arabic's the primary language, obviously, but there's gonna be some stores, some locations, some street signs that'll have like, you know, a little bit of English, like, you know, like underneath it where a little like, you know, point the direction a little. Um, but yeah, I can definitely, I mean, for people who don't know the language, who don't know Arabic, I can understand totally why finding your way around Amman is uh, you know, extremely difficult. I mean, I was just there this past summer. And, uh, you know, I have citizenship from Jordan and I know the country very well, but like, at least I know, even if I do get lost myself, I know the language, I can find my way around. But if you don't know the language, I can just imagine how difficult it can be. Um, so yeah, I, I definitely could sense that struggle, that frustration with the, with the teams, especially when they were trying to ask for directions. A lot of twists and turns and like oh, up yeah. and down and sharp lefts and rights. So, I mean, it was yeah. definitely, it's not an easy thing. Like you said, it's not intuitive, right? I mean, exactly that's... yeah not only that like it's just you feel like you're in the midst of like sometimes like chaotic driving like all like you know the the, the driving is definitely nothing like it is in america when you go to the middle east when you go to those con- countries on that part of the world yeah the driving can be a lot more aggressive um so and things like that definitely uh fall into play too so it definitely makes you feel like you're in uncharted territory when you are around that kind of environment <laughs> the detour uh, they were two, obviously, step by step and letter by letter. Step by step was having to do the wedding. They called it a flirt dance. They said it was you have to do before a wedding in the traditional garb, or you have to memorize the entire twenty-eight letter Arabic alphabet and recite it. I mean, I'm curious if you guys disagree. I feel like the alphabet one's way harder, right? Ooh. Way harder. Well, I um, think I do the alphabet. Not, not for me, but that's that's my first yeah, well, thing. Objectively, all right, Brett, would you have done the dance or the alphabet? Um, uh, probably the dance because I'm, uh, I'm a dancer. No, I'm not. But You're I, I think I think the leg. I think it. Once again, we have another dancing leg with people yeah. that are professional dancers, mm-hmm. and and then the other option also, you know, like I guess it's part of the culture thing. They want to incorporate stuff, but like these things are boring. I'm bored as hell of watching people dance. I don't want to see people sing or recite alphabets. I want to see people like jump off of buildings and like <laughs> dig through hay bales and like spend six hours looking for like a needle in a haystack. Or, in the like, desert. I, there was, that like, that a, episode's yeah. coming. I want to I want to make them look for like a grain of water in a, in a sandstorm. Or uh, I know last season or two seasons ago they had like flip over a bunch of rocks and find like one of four gold tokens. That was last year. Yeah, they'll, they'll have an episode like that. It's yeah, they, they have to, yeah. I just want stuff that's more fun and appealing to the camera, which I thought the the next one would be that, but it still was sort of boring to me. I thought the teams did way better on the alphabet than I would have. I, I would do the alphabet, personally. I I just seem like, I feel like 28 letters is a lot. That, I mean, the, the thing I is, I, for, from what I know, like from what people say, say like, newcomers to the language will you know attest to this but like arabic is like one of the more eloquent languages in the entire world i mean if you think about it like the english language has like seven hundred and sixty-seven thousand words i think and like arabic is like 13 million so like you know when you look at the, the arabic what like the alphabet the fun is, fact you know, right that's there. just the basics and stuff so like when you really put your mind to it you can learn it but like i can understand why for like, you know, English speakers, that would be such a hard alphabet to learn because it doesn't sound similar to like, you know, A, B, C, D. It actually, each letter sounds like its own word when you hear them say it almost. You know? yeah, well, that's what I'm saying. It's like 26 words. You yeah. just said the 13 million thing. I just like was like Dr. Stranging all the. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like, and that's the thing, like, you know, and the, and the good thing for the twins, you know, the twins, because they grew up in Jewish families. They, you know, they know Hebrew to some extent. And Hebrew and Arabic are Semitic languages. They have sim- they're have they similar to each other in some ways. But even Hebrew is not nearly as eloquent and diverse as Arabic. I think Hebrew is like 50,000 words or something. Um, not even close to how eloquent and diverse Arabic is. So um, good kudos to the twins for still like, you know. I, uh, I can't roll my R's either. 
I like the challenges. I like the alphabet one. I actually like that. So no, no, me and, Bre- I, me and Brett I, I honestly in my I wrote down that I feel like you were the only one who Yeah, I just think it's cool. I like seeing the culture stuff. So no, that, I think it's cool seeing it, but I agree with Brett that it is but again it's kind I, of I fun. The caveat sure. is I think if there was elimination on the line, that would have gotten chaotic. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. It would have gotten real chaotic. I think people would have ditched quick and yeah. ran to the dance. Like I think there would have been some switching. What's um, the coolest thing about the culture in Jordan that they could have showed us instead of the alphabet? Because I feel like every culture has a language of some sort, but there's got to be some sort of like hidden gem that they could show us as well. Well, the Arabic isn't just isn't just a Jordanian thing too, right? Yeah, I mean, well, it's, it's one of the you know largest languages in the it's a language of the entire region, including North Africa and the Middle East. But um, as far as like culture, I mean, like I would I would have I would have liked to see like more like you know food challenges. Yeah, yeah. So, like, they should have made them wrestle like, a uh, Dagestani. Uh, <laughs> you know, well, yeah, I would have liked to see Learn like, some wrestling. <laughs> Yo, we just saw the UFC. Dagestani's are ruling. They should have just done something like that. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, hey, but you know, I mean, even the Dagestani, even though that's like a Muslim, you know, region of the world, and but it's still like you know, Russian food would have been cool. Not technically part of the, like the Middle East, like mm-hmm. even Dagestani's, you know, like they have like their own separate culture, which is way different from like the Arabic culture. So I mean, similar religions, but I mean the same religion for both regions, but way different cultures. So when in doubt, food is the guy. I think the fallback. Well, is, this, is this a culture show or is this a competition reality show? It's because more of a culture The culture, show. yeah, it's a, yeah, it's a, a big way. Skill, though. Like when you're traveling. It's like the, the Fromers world. of reality TV. Yeah. Like, I wanted well, if to you be- like, <laughs> I, I was excited to cover this episode because I'm like, hey, like they're yeah. in, they're in my home country. It's my culture. This is my is the place. dance. Is a dance cool. difficult? Is there like a standard dance, or were they making them do like a random like? Well, yeah, I mean, I'll tell you right now, like a dance like that. I mean, because each country in the Middle East kind of like has like their own like spin on like the dance, but overall they're all kind of like similar in the same. Where like you know the skill set is all in the hips and the shoulders, and you got to keep yourself a little all bit. in the you hips. Kind of keep yourself. You got to keep your upper body kind of stiff, but you got to keep your lower body kind of. Oh. Full. <laughs> you know, so like, you got to okay. keep. Your lower- so it's kind of like that almost. Gotcha. You know? <laughs> I was just thinking like, like belly dancing, moments. right? Similar, yeah, belly dancing is so that's like, but um, but even overall, like you know, the way they do their steps and everything, it's you know, a lot of it is there. You got to keep your upper body kind of like, kind of like uh, the ballroom dance, the quick step. I mean, if you see people do like ballroom dancing, quick step, like up there, they're like holding each other, the couple, but like upper body is like completely stiff, and mm-hmm. their lower body is where everything is like, gotcha, you gotcha. Know? So like everything's really in the lower body, but you got to keep your upper body kind of stiff. Glenda and Lamumba uh, did not do well with that. Just a little <laughs> side note. Uh, I do want to talk about the roadblock. Uh, the roadblock was who wants who's feeling broken carted. This one was good. I, I didn't catch what what are the carts called? Wally, do you, is there a good title for those? Did you know they said a name? Uh, I I, I didn't. Even I couldn't listen. pronounce it, so I I, I, didn't, I didn't want to like even try to butcher it. Uh, you had to build the cart. Roll it to the pit stop. Uh, they were very flimsy builds. They were falling apart a lot. It basically, in my opinion, was that like if you ran too fast, it spun out and broke. So, everyone, that's where we're going to get our Mario Party reference of the episode for the Amazing Race. This is kind of like slot car derby. If you <laughs> accelerate too much, you're going to accelerate. And you're going to spin out. And you're going to have a bad time. There wasn't really a lot to work with this episode, but that kind of gave it to us at the very end. So I appreciate it. So there's your amazing race Mario Party reference of the day for you, Logan. If you still ever do a blog again, ever, eventually. Rest in peace. <laughs> Bless up. <laughs> He'll be back. He'll be back. <laughs> I think he's traveling on his Instagram. I think he is. We we know, Brett. We yeah, know. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> I don't watch his channel. He has the I'll internet. Go, I'll still in Canada. Him, <laughs> oh, God. Um, no, but anyway, I want to do... I do want to go over the groupings uh, that we are going to have going into next leg. Uh, Luis and Michelle did win. They got five nights to Barcelona. That's back-to-back legs for them. So congratulations, Luis and Michelle. And to me. And the Brian, uh, even though it's not over yet. Uh, Luis and Michelle and Aubrey and David group one. 
Quentin and Maddie, Derek and Claire for group two, Michael and Marcus, Emily and Molly for group three, and Lamumba and Glenda for group four. Again, I really enjoyed the leg overall. I thought the challenges were cool. I, I agree with Waleed, wish for a little more culture um, and wish it was an actual elimination leg so that would have been a little more frantic. Again, shout out Abby and Will. Sorry you got COVID. That stinks. Like We've seen that in a few of our shows that we've covered over the fall because these a lot of these seasons were filmed half a year ago, a year ago, where COVID stuff was still a lot more serious where you wouldn't be cleared in a few days. So um, hopefully maybe you get another run at it or another shot at a reality TV show. We'd love for you guys to be able to get on again. Um, but check out all of our other coverage. We are going to have a little bit more spread out this week on the Wednesday night coverage. You will get Challenge Survivor uh, Love Boat as well at some point this week or weekend. Uh, we already have out the two episodes of Bachelor in Paradise. We will have out tomorrow the Love is Blind Season 3 Week 2 review. Uh, week 2 of 4. Uh, what else do we have coming? Surreal Life. Oh, yes, yeah, Surreal Life. We'll have that out this weekend, definitely. Uh, their Monday night show, so I probably should. It was a double, that. too. Oh, God. Damn. I watched it. I watched the first episode. It was good. All right, I'm going to watch them both. We'll get them this weekend, probably even Sunday. It's going to almost have to be yeah. maybe we just kind of start it with episode two, even mm. if it has if come down to our week two, just because of the day of the week. All right, cool. Uh, check us out on Instagram, especially on TikTok as well. A lot of funny clips that's building up fast. Brian, especially, is killing it with his clips of shows that we're not watching on TV. Yeah. So check it out if you want to see our perspective on, on some other things. And also look out for uh, at least Brian appearing on another reality TV live stream podcast. We'll throw some stuff out on our socials. I'm hoping to join as well. Uh, for myself, Brian, Waleed, and Brett, thank you. Peace.